Hi everyone, welcome on into North Dakota today. Well, we sure have all, you know, said this phrase or at least heard it. That kind of thing doesn't happen in our town, but Midwest murder proves otherwise. Joining us this morning, we have the co-hosts of the Midwest Murder Podcast, Don and Jonah. Good morning, both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. You know, we are getting into spooky season, but this is a little intense. We're talking about actual murders taking place in the Midwest, and you guys are kind of going through all the facts and, and the crime, as I understand it. This yeah? This is very much real life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell us about that and what your listeners uh, really enjoy listening to. <laughs> These are scary stories, yeah. but they're real. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's deeply researched topics, yeah. of, of course, of real murder. These are completed stories. So in each episode of Midwest Murder, Don or I is telling the story. The other person does not know the details of the story. Oh. So we like to think of that other, the co-host is in the chair of like the fan and mm -hmm. you get organic reactions and real time reactions. So our reactions in the podcast are not scripted, but we research and write our script that we present. So how did this really begin for each of you? This is a couple years old, yeah? About three, yeah. yeah. I, I'm an idea guy. And so I said to Jonah one day after, uh, <laughs> just in the evening we were celebrating for a mutual friend and I said, hey, we should do a true crime podcast. And he didn't really like the idea. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I don't know about oh, that. And yeah. um, so a little pat on the head and he's like, no, well, probably not. <laughs> and, and then about a year later he had a host, or pardon me, a true crime author, CJ Wynn, on his own podcast. Okay. And he, that's kind of sparked his interest, and he called me up and he said, hey, are you still interested? And I said, you're heckin' right, let's do it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, and there's such a big audience for it, too. It's, it's trendy, but it, then there's so much that has to go into it. So was that the initial resistance as to why it was like maybe too big of an undertaking at yeah. first? I didn't find my, my place. I didn't see my place in the true crime world. Gotcha. I, I don't have a pre-existing true crime fandom. Mm -hmm. I've never listened to another true crime podcast. Wow. I've watched my fair share of documentaries. Right. I built this, I built my own business podcasting in my basement. Started from nothing. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was doing. I invested in the equipment, st started a podcast. A couple years later, I met Dawn. Yeah. A couple years after that, I moved my podcast studio out of my basement into a full-time space. And that's about when Dawn hit me up with the idea to do true crime. And I was wow. like, I don't know. I don't see it. It's like a such a stereotype to do a true crime podcast. Uh -huh. So. But after I got into my full-time studio, I was looking for those ideas. And I had a willing uh, partner here, so we sat down. What does this look like? How do we do it? How do we research it? Yeah. Because for me, mm -hmm. podcasts were two people BSing. It was interviews. Yeah. You know, and I knew I was like, I don't want to BS about someone dying. Right. Um, so, but, but after reading CJ Wynn's book and having her as a guest on my podcast, mm -hmm. which was a conversational interview-based podcast, I found my place, and I, I, I think, you know what? I've got some skills as a writer and a researcher. I'm a natural storyteller. Yep. Let's see what can happen. And I have been into true crime for you know years, and I so I you am did have a, the fandom. Yes. Yeah. Well, I am our demographic. Okay. I'm a, you know I'm a suburban <laughs> mom who drinks wine, so of course <laughs> I am. Um, and but, likes to stay up late getting scared. It right, sounds like. right, right. <laughs> but you know FBI files, true crime, you know all of that. Uh, yeah. You know, it's it's you know plus my my history and family's history in. in law enforcement has just always kind of mm -hmm. been there for me. So mm -hmm. I, I had the drive, I had the, the interest, and then brought him along, convinced him somehow. So are the things you're finding shocking? Are they things that your jaw would drop yeah. and you're like, and you truly say like that can't happen here type of a story? There are times, there are times that mm -hmm. it is shocking and now it's, now you feel like, you know, because we're, we're on episode almost 80. Yeah. And it's like, there's, there's no way anything can shock me. Yeah. And things can still shock Until us. the next episode, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah. So how much research goes into each episode? Is this days, weeks? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For, per episode. Yeah. Yeah. Weeks, weeks of research into each episode. Uh, I, I like to find as many sources, cross-reference yeah. things. We, it's very important to us that we don't misrepresent anything that happened mm -hmm. in, in these stories. We want the full truth as, as well as it, it, it's out there. And you guys have something exciting coming up. You want to do a live show, yes? We do. Well, we primarily record our episodes live. Right. Anyway. With an audience, I with, guess? With an yeah. audience. Yes, <laughs> okay. with an audience. Yep. And so this thir this Thursday we will be in Fargo at the um, at the Sanctuary Event Center. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yep. Our second time back. Yeah, it's exciting. When we started this, we didn't know we would do this live for an audience. That yep. was not part of our intention. We just wanted to tell really well researched stories mm -hmm. and, and felt like we had something mm -hmm. to bring in. Someone said, hey, what about, why don't you come record my, your podcast at my bar and yeah. we'll, we'll sell some tickets. We said, hey, that's a cool idea. Okay, yeah, we'll try let's it. try it out. And we did that. It was right after COVID. I think we sold about 48 tickets, which was the max capacity at that time due to the restrictions. And here we are 
two and a half years later and we've moved out of these 40, 50, 60 person venues. Yep. We've been coming mm -hmm. to Fargo for a long time mm -hmm. and we've leveled our way up to uh, the Sanctuary in partnership with Jade Presents. And the live shows are exciting. You get a lot of interactions between Don and I that the don't make the recorded podcast. Right, the edited yeah. down version yeah. for time, huh? Yeah, well, time and, yeah. time and just some of those more personal interactions, um, just different things that we say if we need to order a beer or you know, just <laughs> different, different things that happen during the live show. The Q&A is part of it. Fans get to name the episode. So there's okay. some cool live interactions that you just don't get on it and what's not fun about gathering with people and hearing a scary story yeah, together. Yeah. That is people very, will very laugh, real. people will cry. Uh, yeah. I mean you get the whole gamut of emotions that happen in our, our podcast. So how do we get tickets and then how do we listen in general? Well you can find us anywhere you listen to your podcasts mm -hmm. whether it be Spotify, Apple, Audible, it's pretty cool to see that. Yeah, you just find, uh, find Midwest Murder anywhere mm -hmm. podcasts can be found. Okay. And then tickets can be found on our social media through Jade Presents. It, it's it links all over. Okay. Wow. Thank you both so much for coming on and really explaining the work and the process that it takes to do something successfully like this. So yeah. congratulations to you Thanks both. Thank you. Us, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, of course. All right. Stick around, everybody. We have a big show coming up here today on North Dakota Today, including Cooking with Cashway. That's up next.